Your Excellency Sheikh Saad Al Hariri, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Lebanon, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. When they invite me to come to Lebanon to participate in this conference, I always say, I, I receive many invitations to talk here and here, but I say, Lebanon, Beirut, I cannot say no. Yeah. As Sheikh Saad Al Hariri now mentioned, you know, I worked with Lebanon for a long time to, to encourage them. Uh, either you know to supply gas or even for the exploration. I once I say to them back in middle of 2000, opportunity comes sometimes once, and you should take it, but very quick. Anyway, as the French say, you come late better than you never come. Let me now to allow me to take you to a trip with me for the. M the marketing of gas, how we can see the international market. It gives me great honor and pleasure to be here today in Beirut. Among such speakers, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to address this prominent forum, which brings together both political and industrial leaders. Allow me to share with you an overview of the global gas market. There is no doubt that the world holds abundant resource of natural gas estimated currently at more than 500 trillion cubic meters, around 200 uh, trillion of which are considered proven reserves. Current global consumption level indicate that there is, is a sufficient gas to meet demand for the next 60 years. If we consider only the proven reserves and more than 150 years considering the total estimated gas resource, while conventional gas dominates the global gas market, shale gas is starting to represent a larger portion of total gas resources estimated now at no less than 40%. The unconventional gas reserves are mainly located in the United States. Other countries may also have significant resource, but this remains to be commercially proven. The Middle East is estimated to hold 85 trillion cubic meters uh, in gas resources, amounting to 20% of the world's total. Of that 85 trillion cubic meters, Lebanon is estimated to hold up to 1 trillion cubic meters, mainly in the Levant Basin. Substantial amount of investment will be required to bring Lebanon's gas to the market. In order to materialize this investment and attract suitable uh, investors, a flexible and competitive legal and physical framework is required. Therefore, the new degrees recently approved by the Lebanese Council of Ministers and published early this year is a step in the right direction. Ladies and gentlemen, on the demand side, the global economic growth is one of the main drivers for gas demand. Economic growth mainly centered in Asia is estimated to be 3% three per, three per annum. This level of economic growth along with policies of energy intensity reduction and energy saving are expected to lead to an estimated global energy demand growth in the long run of 1% per annum. Splitting energy demand among the diff different types of fuel depends not only on the prices of each respective fuel type, but also in, on the available uh, substitution possibilities and on the energy policies of each consuming country. 
Therefore, a consuming country may decide whether to promote one fuel type at the expenses of another based on these interconnected factors. From a natural gas perspective, it's slowly becoming the dominant fuel in, in many areas of the, of the world. Whereas most of the emerging economies still tend to favor cheaper coal. Another, uh, nonetheless, natural gas demand is expected to increase globally at a faster rate than other fuels, estimated in a range of 1.5 to 2 percent per annum. In comparison, LNG demand in general expected to be twice this level. Returning to the supply side from a natural gas production point of view, most forecasts expect global gas production to increase 50 by percent by 2040 from today's level to cope with the projected growth in demand. Five countries, Russia, USA, Iran, Australia, and China, will represent more than 60% of this growth in gas production. China currently produce around 120 billion cubic meters, of which 20% comes from the shale gas, and the growth, must, uh, mo most of the production is consumed locally. Currently, shale gas represent 15 to 18% of today's global gas production. This could rise to 30% by 2040, due to the widespread use of fracking techniques, something that may not be e so easy to replicate it outside the USA. Nevertheless, from supply standpoint, I see the gas market facing two challenges. Firstly, a massive expansion of LNG export capacity, which is coming at a time of weaker than expected demand. Almost of all, all of the projected increase come from investment decisions already taken. Secondly, com competition from other fuels such as coal and renewable, mainly in the power sector, it's clear that the path of global gas market rebalance will depend on the scale of economy. Growth of developing Asian countries, the region has potential for large growth in demand. But unlocking is required progress on marketing in market and environmental regulations. However, market rebalance uh, re may take several years to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, traditionally, world gas market have operated in three largely self-contained regions, North America, Europe, and the Middle East and Far East. These regions have had limited in interconnectivity in the past, leading to the development of individual distinctive supply demand dynamics. This situation resulted in a very different gas pricing model in each region. In North America, gas prices are determined by market fundamentals through the Herney Hope system. In Europe, prices are mostly determined in long term contracts indexed against fuel oil and heating oil prices. In the Middle East and Far East, pricing is also based on long term contracts and ducks it to a mix of oil prices. These different pricing models have to, date, to, uh, have to date resulted in a very different price levels and price volatility, volatility between the regions. However, the overarching market imbalance has depressed prices in all regions. One could expect that global gas market will remain fragmented as the gas market fundamentals of each main region are different. 
this would be expected to remain the case in the foreseeable, foreseeable future. The extent of which this trend in a global gas market could be challenged depends on both the penetration of US LNG export and the development of the hubs in the Asian region. For the US LNG export, the impact will depend on their competitiveness in the different regional market after transport costs are included. Let me tell you that we won who will be exporting LNG from US. As, as we know that back, we built the largest uh, LNG terminal in Texas. We call it the Golden Bus. To, in that time, we built it because the time that when the United States has a shortage of gas and we planned to export 15 million tons of LNG to the United States. In that time, the price of the Hirn Hope was 15 to 17 dollars. But Qatar Petroleum and ExxonMobil, who are a partner in this project, we shocked by the shale gas, who came just we finished building the terminal, the gas of, you know, uh, in the United States dropped to three dollars, even cannot cover the transportation cost. But what we should do? We already built it. We already invest $1.5 billion. So now what we decided with ExxonMobil is converted to be an export than to import. So hopefully now we are working with ExxonMobil in the feed. We finished the pre-feed, now in the feed. Hopefully if everything goes smoothly, we got the license from the DOE, hopefully by 20. One, uh, 20, 2021, we will be start to export from United States. So we will be part of this, you know, chemical LNG. And ladies and gentlemen, for, for overview, I have presented shows that the global gas market are going through remarkable challenges and changes. But we have to live with the change and challenge. We start, you know, when we start, you know, when I become a, a minister in 1992 in Qatar, total our production of oil only 350,000 barrel. LNG was zero production. We discovered this huge gas reserve field. It's considered the biggest non-associated gas field in the whole world. Approval reserve, 900 TCF. So it put us with a big challenge. But in that time, the price of oil was below $10. But we never stop. We challenge even ourselves. And just in a few years, Qatar becoming the biggest LNG producer in the world with 77 million tons. Also, Qatar has become the biggest GTL producer in the world because we challenge ourselves also in the GTL. As most of you, maybe you know what it means GTL, is gas to liquid. That you convert gas to diesel, to loop oil, to jet fuel. And the best uh, news that the, gas, the diesel and the oil uh, products who came from gas is zero emission. And today Qatar is the biggest uh, LNG produce, uh, GTL producers in the world. Also, because we produce, we find helium in our gas. So we extract the helium. Today, Qatar is the number one helium exporter in the world. Also, we built the biggest condensate refinery in the world. Also, we, and this is my advice to Lebanon, as our experience, when you discover gas in the future, and I hope you will, so you have to do what we did, create a basket of gas. Divided your gas for a local consumption and for industrial and for export. Industrial, you can enter to ethylene, polyethylene, you can enter to fertilizers and others. Today, Qatar is one of the biggest fertilizer producers in the world. 
we produce more than 7 million tons of urea. We also built the, a, a world-scale aluminum smelter. Also, we are a big producer in steel. Also, we produce eth uh, methanol, we produce uh, uh, VC, VCM, and we produce many downstream products. Today, we are exporting to 95 countries in the world from all products. So it's not the mean that we export all our gas. We insist to industrialize our nation, and this because of the added value. Today, if you see, the down, it's a cycle. The downstream is now making more money than the upstream. And the before, the down, but upstream making money more than the downstream. But you have to balance it. And this is the beauty, what we did to balance. In the good days and the bad days, we are balancing our you know, business. Today, we are the lowest uh, cost in LNG in the world. Also, we built or we invent the biggest shipping gas transportation in the world. Now we are operating more 70 ships. And we built the biggest LNG ships in the world. No one yet built it uh, except us. Usually, the conventional LNG ship is 155,000 cubic meter. We introduced two models to the world. One we call it Q-Flex, Qatar Flex, is 210. And the other one we call it Qatar Maximum, or Qatar Max, is 266,000 cubic feet. So today we are in the LNG market. We can compete, and we sell gas to three continents. For instance, UK, 30% of their gas consumption come from Qatar. We supply Italy, Belgium, Poland, France, and others. In Asia, we supply uh, India, uh, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, uh, Thailand, and recently we signed a big contract with Pakistan, almost 5 million tons. In the Gulf, we supply LNG to Kuwait and to Dubai, and also to Jordan. So today, what I was recommended to Lebanon, what, you know, just please, I wouldn't want to take you a long speech, but I was recommended to Lebanon now what they should do. My recommendation is to import LNG for a term, uh, what they call it, medium term, five years. Through, uh, you know, and then because it will save a lot of money for you from the difference of the fuel and diesel price, and also for the environmental, you know, cause. I tried back in 2009 with Total, with my guy, nice, beautiful face there, sitting there, <laughs> to, uh, to export uh, LNG to Lebanon. We brought the full project, but before 2001, 2003. And the time I remember I met Sheikh Rafiq al-Hariri, and he was the biggest support for us. And he was convinced, not support because he likes us or we like him. It's a business. It's a calculated how you save and how we present, you know, for saving for Lebanon, both commercially and business. Last night I have a, a you know, last night I been invited a dinner from my good friend Michel Faron was a very interesting dinner. And I met Ms. Said Cesar, the minister of, and we had a long discussion about that. We decide, you know, decided that we will continue to, you know, to arrange for Mr. Cesar to meet our LNG market or either our LNG companies to discuss about oil and even for a, even for a technical and even for marketing resource. In the, so I would like to conclude my speech. The brief of overview I have presented show that the global gas market are going through remarkable challenge and change. If I was to summarize all these changes, I would say that they are all covering towards a new competitive landscape
with a more abundant and fragmented global <coughs> gas supply. Some, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Some kind of innova innovation will be required in the, in the marketing of gas. This will involve looking at all the potential market and types of consumers all over the global, providing more flexibility and adopting more balanced marketing strategic suited to the new needs to both new and existing, existing customers. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheikh Saad al-Hariri, allowed me to say in this, in this concludes May overview of global, uh, global gas market. Thank you for your kind attention. We say one hand cannot clap. Front page communication is privilege to present you with a trophy symbolizing the Libano-Qatari friendship, acting in tandem to fly off the higher skies in business, economy, and in the betterment of their national talents. Thank you for your presence and for your insightful speech. Thank you. Thank you.